Hello, my name is Luke Budrow, and this is my presentation. I would like to begin with a quote from the Communist Manifesto, written by Karl Marx. He says, Let the ruling classes tremble at a communistic revolution. The proletarians have nothing to lose but their chains. They have a world to win. Working men of all countries unite. We know, after looking into Marx's theories and works, that he was a revolutionary philosopher and political activist that aimed at starting an uprising in the world to try and shift the balance. He was on a quest for power, not to control it, but to acquire it, to be distributed among the masses and give back to the people what was already rightfully theirs. Marx influenced many people and changed their thinking. One such person is Antonio Gramsci. Antonio Gramsci was born in Italy in 1891, which is eight years after the death of Marx. In his life, Gramsci founded the Italian Communist Party and built and developed on Marx's theories and ideals, as well as Lenin's ideals. Gramsci was really interested and focused on power and how it was used by those who had it and how it was gained by those who wanted to bring change. These ideals were harmonious with those of Marx. If he could understand how power was shifted, then perhaps he could crack the code to shift the power from the elite to the working class and ultimately destroy the class system. Gramsci created a term, cultural hegemony, to describe culture in any society. I will describe a demonstration I watched in a video to which I will provide the link to that describes this ideal. Picture dominant society, that is to say, the practices and traditions considered normal in day-to-day -day life within our own cultural context. Picture it as a large glass container. Now, picture all that makes up that society as milk that fills that container. These two elements make up the dominant society and culture. It is everything that is contained in any one culture, including the people, places, and practices. It is what we have come to understand as good, normal, comfortable, and acceptable. Now, picture adding red food coloring to the container. This food coloring represents radical ideas that are much different than the normal ideals in the dominant society. When first introduced, these ideas sit on the surface and stick out in plain sight for all to see. In an effort to mask these radical ideals, society will stir the container and bury those radical things. But in doing so, the liquid, which is culture, changes ever so slightly and becomes a different shade. Everything is once again consistent and returned to a sort of normalcy, but it is changed in some degree. This illustration explains cultural hegemony because depending on the dominant society, the ideals, practices, and people will change and adjust, never quite losing their touch with the cultural norm but changed ever so slightly to mask the radical ideas and diffuse them. This gives us a glimpse into Gramsci's understanding of cultural power, and from his work, we can see that he believes that it will take more than just a cultural revolution, but that it will take a strategic overhaul that incorporates political and economic power. He believed that instead of just a physical revolution to claim the means of production, there needed to also be a cultural change and a change in consciousness. Nextly, we will look at Vladimir Lenin. He was born in Russia in 1870, 13 years before the death of Marx. Lenin really developed and modernized theories that were developed originally by Karl Marx. He took the ideals of capitalism outlined by Marx and modified them to better explain the more current economic and political situations of the world. Lenin described that the economy was not so much competitive as it was anymore, but now it was more an imperialist econ economy. That is to say that masters of certain industries are interjecting themselves into underdeveloped countries and exploiting their economies to supercharge their profit. This allowed industries to be ruled by a few elite superpowers and some industries even becoming monopolized by one company holding all the power. Now besides his contributions to the economical ideology of Marx, he also played a very important political role in Russia. He played a part in starting the Bolshevik Revolution, the October Revolution, 
and the Russian Civil War, where he himself ordered the campaign known as Red Terror. Lenin, unlike Gramsci and Marx, effectively began a revolution in which he maintained economic and political power. He used very strategic political maneuvers to create an uprising and overthrow and would make himself present with a solution. After the October Revolution in 1917, the provisional government of Russia was overthrown and Lenin was elected to lead the new socialist government. Under Lenin's leadership, Russia was united and became the Soviet Union. On a quick side note, under Lenin, Russia was the first government to legalize both homosexuality and abortions. Lenin was one of the most influential figures in the history of communism, and he is also viewed as a merciless dictator who abused basic human rights. These are just very quick glimpses into these historical figures and the influence they had on the world and the way they were influenced by Marx. As young historians, we must not view them from our side of the fence, but instead climb atop the fence and hear and see and appreciate the events and the influence and the change that altered the path of the world and still affects us today. Thank you for your time, and please find the discussion questions posted below.